Article 24, shall the Town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $225,000 to complete appraisals on the Town's utility properties as part of the, 200, as part of the 2016 Townwide Revaluation of Property in Hampton as required by the State Constitution and the Department of Revenue Administration under RSA 75-1, 75-4, 75-8. This shall be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 32-7, Roman 6, and will not lapse until the townwide revaluation is completed or by March 31, 2017, whichever is sooner. A majority vote is required, and it's recommended by the Board of Selectmen 5-0, recommended by the Budget Committee 12-2. to two. The fiscal impact note from the Finance Department, the estimated 2016 tax impact on $225,000 is 8.1 cents per $1,000 of valuation. Note, as the Town of Hampton is required to complete appraisals on all property types as part of the 2016 reevaluation, this would also include all utility properties. So they two are appraised in accordance with their full and true market value as of April 1, 2016. The town has now received proposals for the completion of these complex appraisal reports, the list of which includes Seabrook Station Nuclear Power Plant, Hampton Assets, Unitil Energy Systems, Northern Utilities, Aquarian Water Company, Public Service of New Hampshire, Fairpoint Communication, and Comcast. As Hampton's utility assets represent a substantial portion of the property tax base, it is imperative that they reflect fair and equitable assessments as of April 1, 2016. Is there a motion to, dis to open discussion on Article 24? Moved by Mr. Bean. Is there a second? Seconded by Ms. Woolsey. Mr. Bean, would you like to speak to? Article 24. Mr. Tinker, and then Town Council, please, sir. All right. I'm going to look to our assessor, Mr. Tinker. Edward Tinker, uh, Chief Assessor uh, in Hampton. Um, this warrant article will um, actually complete the process that we're currently under um, to complete uh, new values for all properties in Hampton. Uh, the utilities are one property that need to be done based on uh, the requirements of RSA 75-1. Um, the the point of, of this is so that every homeowner is paying their fair and equitable share of the tax rate. Um, in 2015, the utilities represented uh, the top four taxpayers in, in town. Um, additionally, uh, the next era or the Seaburg power plant, um, which is currently under a pilot agreement, was still the sixth highest taxpayer based on uh, their pilot payment. Um, that pilot payment runs for six, or actually five more years through 2020. The point of having the appraisal done on that is very complex. The appraisal itself is very complex. We were able to um, secure an appraiser out of Boston that specializes in these appraisals. The data and the time that it takes to complete a utility or nuclear power plant appraisal is extensive. Um, the time to do it is now the cost. Um, Today, of course, is going to be more than likely a lot less than in five years. The other point is that based on current market conditions, preliminary analysis that we've done as part of the revaluation, that this is the most cost-effective time to do the appraisal for you, the taxpayers. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tinker. Yes. Mr. Gerald. Townspeople to know that these, uh, this among this group of taxpayers are those who have dominated the tax abatement cases that we've faced for the last three years, uh, and in particular, the Fairpoint Communications has brought suit in Superior Court against 140 municipalities, and it's very important that uh, that this be done uh, appraised now. Uh, so that we'll have the appropriate figures in which to fight cases like this because these are the, among the highest taxpayers in town who are seeking to have their share be lowered at which will be the expense of all other taxpayers. And uh, it's also uh, important to note that uh, in regard to the Seabrook nuclear power plant, uh, the need for the appraisal now, uh, as Ed has said, uh, that is subject to a pilot agreement, but nevertheless, uh, will need to be done in future, and, and, and where it's important now to have all these done in relation to one another, because the utilities in their cases, when these do come to court, do point to how each other is being evaluated and appraised and assessed. Uh, so it's important for consistency's sake to have all these done in an appropriate way. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Gerald. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Mr. Kravitz. Uh, Sonny Kravitz, 18 Stead Drive. I would suggest that it, this warrant article be amended to, to add the, ask Mr. Tinker to add how much revenue is generated currently because you're asking the taxpayers to spend a quarter of a million dollars to evaluate them. Hopefully they'll bring in, in lieu of taxes, they'll bring more. I recall what happened with Seabrook when, the, when they, their, their contribution was frozen for five years, I guess. So I don't know if Mr. Tinker has the numbers. Well, I think you'll find, Mr. Kravitz, at the end of the article, it's a... Uh, you know how much revenue was generated? So uh, I think he's put, put it together as, as he wants to see it. It does state at the end of the article that those utility assets represent a substantial portion of the property tax base. And, and um, like all of us, our tax bills tend to vary year to year. Um, but there's a, there certainly is a nod to the fact that they are major contributors to the tax base. Okay. Mr. Tilbury. Yes, uh, Don Tilbury, 15 Bride Hill Drive, and I have a question regarding the taxes from the nuclear power plant. Uh, somehow, those taxes were reduced by a threat, threat, I'm sure, will take you to court if you don't do something about that taxes. And the only thing is, my taxes went up all these years, and their taxes go down. I'd like to know why. Thank you, Mr. Tilbury. Mr. Tinker, do you have any commentary on um, whether uh, the power plant taxes have gone down? And if so, uh, whether it's been recent or whether it's a depreciation um, issue? Right. No, the, um, as, as uh, our town attorney was saying, um, all utilities this year, or at least in the past five years, have filed abatements and appeals. Um, so we have uh, negotiated or uh, gone to uh, court, uh, the BTLA, and um, the result is that we uh, win some, we lose some. And, uh, you know, because the utilities have been a big part of that for the past five years, uh, and next era being one of them, um, we, had, we ended up negotiating uh, the current pilot program. Again, remember the utilities are all basically in the top five or six taxpayers. Um, and that's the point of this Warren article, is that we want them to be valued at fair market value. We, we, we feel that they should pay their fair share as well as you, uh, every homeowner, and that, that's the point of this Warren article. Thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Waddell. You know, one of the problems is that, and in, in our state representatives and our state senator has been fighting this up in Concord constantly, is that there's a a pollution control exemption that you that companies get and uh, you know it, it if you don't negotiate with them something you could end up with zero and Rennie Cushion you can talk to him he has filed a bill for the last three sessions I think trying to repeal that exemption because it's not an exemption necessarily on what is a pollution control it's an exemption on on pipes that the water inflow and outflow of water that they need for cooling so it represents a very uh, complex and difficult problem for the town. So it's necessary to get this evaluation done so that when we go back, that we'll have some, uh, some ammunition. Thank you. Thank Mr. You, Mr. Moderator. Yes, Mr. Griffin. I would just like to say, too, that uh, this should have been done before on the other boards that I served when we were fighting the Seabrook power plant. And because we didn't do this, this is why Mr. Tillsbury's insurance uh, taxes have gone up. We weren't prepared to, to fight back. And this should have been done long ago, but we penny, penny pinched on the other boards that I was on, and this is the result. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Zanoy? Yeah. yeah, Jerry Zanoy here, 16 Presidential Circle. There's a point of edification here. I don't, I'm not going to make any motion here, but the audit, the, uh, the assessing of the Seabrook station power plant it's going to cost us about 125,000 out of this 225 being requested 
It's not going to get us one dollar of taxes because the town has a payment in lieu of tax agreement for the next five years. Yes, it'll go into the valuation, but it'll be non-taxable. So we're going to spend 125000 out of the 225 to gain nothing in terms of taxes. I'd like to see us wait until at least 2019 or 20 and then do a full-up assessment when it makes sense in the next five-year cycle of reassessment. We're not going to gain $1 of taxes out of this, this assessment. It's going to cost us $125 out of the $225. I, I, I just... I, need, I needed to provide that edification to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Zanoy. Uh, Mr. Bean. Uh, the reason uh, the gentleman's taxes from uh, Bride Hill went up is because uh, uh, the Ways and Means Committee, uh, the Dread Commissioner, uh, conquered those around the flagpole, had permitted this uh, RSA 7712 to allow for a pollution control exemption. For years. It has been, it has been approved by those in Concord. It has been fought by our, our delegation unsuccessfully. Most recently, where that, that law was uh, amended or that, that effort was amended by Senator Cushing, uh, it's been unsuccessful. Your town representatives, to include the selectmen, have worked very diligently with the New Hampshire Municipal, Muni Municipal Association, uh, and we have not been able to crack that beast yet, but we will. This, in all likelihood, this effort will probably end up in the tort arena. Uh, we have no confidence in the legislative process. We think this belongs before a judge, those of us that have researched it, those that are, of us that have approved it, where it does not come down to people from the rest of the state that enjoy lower taxes at our expense. So while the legislature has uh, endeavored to pursue this in legitimate legislative channels, that's not going to happen. So going forward, we're going to redouble our efforts. This matter of whether this produces a dime or not is a moot point, although that's untrue, has been spoken by Mr. Zanoy. This board, the prior board, was very involved with these negotiations. And quite frankly, the town and the prior boards, and I was a part of that board, were not successful in maximizing efficiency for the taxpayer and representation in that. And that's going to change. But uh, again, Mr. Zanoy's point that this is uh, not producing revenue, uh, it's a moot point. This is a requirement of law. This is a matter of equity. This is a matter as we scrounge for tax dollars that we do justice. And uh, to do anything other is illegal. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bean. Um, Ms. Tilbury, um, before I get to you, is there anyone else who hasn't spoken on this article who wishes to be heard? Seeing none, Mr. Tilbury, and then we're going to move. Uh, to the next article. Go ahead, Mr. Tilbury. Well, uh, I understand that uh, Seabrook also reduced their taxes, and uh, along with Hampton. And uh, I say thank you very much, Next Era, for uh, reducing your taxes for your host towns. Very, very nice that you treat the host towns, both Seabrook and, and Hampton, the way you do. They just don't seem to appreciate. Uh, being there and having the people and all that. It's just that uh, they don't show proper respect to the host towns, that's all. Thank you, Mr. Tilbury. So um, we're going to move now to Article 25.